Hello, Math 300, and this is Professor Gonzalez. And um, I had one student that asked a question about, um, uh, I think it was number 13 from the homework um, from 10.2. I already did all the homework problems on 10.3 and 10.5, the harder sections. But I thought um, that question number 13 is kind of challenging, and I thought I'd go over that. And while I'm going over that, I might as well just do the whole thing. Um, because I think that the rest of it will go fairly quick. So this is uh, just going over the homework uh, questions from uh, my math lab on section uh, 10 point, 10 point 10.2. Okay, here's the first one, evaluate. This is eight factorial, which just simply means eight times seven, times six, times five, times four, times three, times two, times one. And when you multiply all that together, we get 40,000. 320 and so that's the answer <clears throat> so evaluating this next uh, problem is a fraction and um, the way we'd like to evaluate this is to simply write down 16 factorial and write it out 16 times 15 times 14 and I know you've seen this before times 13 and we'll leave that as 13 factorial because that matches up perfectly with our 13 factorial, and we have exact common factors in numerator and denominator, they will reduce down to one, which just gives us the product of 16 times 15 times 14. Of course, the bottom is just one, so we don't have to write that. And uh, that product is 3,360. Moving on to evaluating the next one in a similar way. We're going to write 17 times 16 times 15 times 14 factorial. We could write that 13, 12, and, and down, but that will just match up perfectly with the 14 factorial, which would do the same. And so we might as well just stop right there and realize that 14 factorial over 14 factorial just reduces down to 1, leaving us with 17 times 16 times 15, which has a product of 4,080. Moving on to the next one, um, we will go ahead and simplify inside the bracket first. That would be 6 minus 2 is 4 factorial. So we have 6 factorial over 4 factorial. Now you can't say 6 and 4 reduce directly because they're factorials. Um, but you can, you know, write them out 6 times 5 times 4 factorial over 4 factorial, and now those two are identical factors and will reduce or simplify down to 1 over 1, which leaves us with 6 times 5, which is 30. Okay, moving on to the next one. We have 5 factorial over 3 factorial, and 5 minus 3 is 2 factorial. So when we match these up, 5 factorial times, I'm sorry, 5 times 4 times 3 factorial, I like to match up my largest factorial in the denominator. Um, that way I get to reduce as much as I can, right? That reduces down to 1. Uh, remember, we still have 2 factorial, which is just 2 times 1. So you can reduce or you can just realize that this is what? 5 times 4 is 20 divided by 2, which equals 10. Or reduce with the 2 and the 4. In any case, you're going to get 10. Uh, number 6 is the same exact problem. I'm not sure what happened there. So that's also 10. Um, <clears throat> number 7. So it says, A panel containing 5 on-off switches in a row is to be set. Okay. Assuming no restrictions on individual switches, use the fundamental counting principle to find the total number of possible panel settings. So the fundamental counting principle, um, the way we can do this is by thinking, you know, how many we have five? So we have five um, different settings. Or so we have five panels. So one, two, three, four, five. And each one of those um, switches can either be on or off, so they have two options. The first switch could be on or off, the second switch can be on or off, the third switch on or off, the fourth switch on or off. 
with the fifth switch on or off. Now this um, actually is not too bad to show a tree diagram, but as we know, tree diagrams are awesome in, tr in terms of showing this fundamental counting principle, but tree diagrams also grow out of control pretty quick. This one's not too bad, but I still couldn't fit it in this space. Anyhow, the faster way of doing it is thinking of two times two times two times two times two, or think of it as two to the what, fifth power, and two to the fifth power is 32. So there's 32 uh, different um, ways of setting that. So let's see a panel. Find the total number of possible panel settings. And these are these are with the switches, right? Switches on or off, up or down, if they're, you know, like light switches, I guess. Let's take a look at number eight. And number eight, also asking for the fundamental counting principle um, to do this. Uh, we can also, um, you know, uh, by this time you already know um, combinations and permutations, so you could use um, those formulas as well. Um, but this is in how many ways can could members of the following club line up all nine members for a photograph? So um, in a fundamental way, right, we're lining these people up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. And, um, you know, this, this would be, uh, you know, order is important. Um, if you're, you know, taking pictures, it, it order is important on how you take them, um, the, uh, the arrangements. And um, the other thing is that um, you're not going to have duplicate people, right? You can't have two Jameses out there or two Sandys. But um, if we're th fundamentally thinking about this, then if we have, if we're starting off, how many people actually could be possible for that first position? And that would be all nine of them could be possible there. And after one takes that first position, then there's eight possible for the second. And the, so the first two positions are taken. So now there are seven a possible. And six, five, four, three, two, and only one possible on that last position because all the other positions are taken. And so this is the fundamental counting principle where you can now multiply those. This would also be the same thing, um, same answer is if you thought of this as a permutation where order matters and you don't have any replacement, uh, you can't have any duplicates of nine, choose nine. In any case, both of those um, techniques, either multiplying this or using a permutation formula, you will have 362,880 arrangements. Um, next Counting numbers are to be formed using only digits 2, 6, 4, 3, and 5. Uh, 2, 6, 4, 3, and 5. Determine the number of different possibilities or possibilities for two-digit numbers. Okay, so we're talking about just two-digit numbers. Um, so there's the first digit, there's the second digit. And uh, let's see. Counting numbers are formed using only these digits. Determine the number of different possibilities for two-digit numbers. Well, something like 22, that's still a two-digit number. So is 66 or 33. What I'm saying is using duplicates like 33 of that same number um, is possible, right? Because that's still a counting two-digit counting number. So how many numbers are possible for this first digit right here? And that is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different numbers are possible. And since you can't have duplicates, five are possible for the second number. And so when we use a fundamental counting principle, we use the multiplicative rule, multiply them, and we get 25 uh, different counting numbers. Uh, number 10, um, for, for a $3.98, for $3.98, you can get a salad, a main course, a dessert at the cafeteria. If you have a choice of five different salads. Okay, so we've got our salads. And there's five different choices there. And five different main courses. There's our main course and there's five different choices there. And then there's six different desserts. There are how many different meals or how many different meals can you get for $3.98? Once again, this is the fundamental counting principle, and you can multiply those up. And you could also make a tree diagram. Again, 
five branches there, and each one of those five branches has five branches, and each one of those five branches has six branches. So this is multiplication. So this is 5 times 5 times 6, which is 150 um, different meals you can get for $3.98. Don has five pairs of shoes, six pair or two pairs, so we Don has five pairs of shoes. Two pair of pants. Nine shirts. And using the fundamental counting principle and multiplying, we end up getting 90. How many different outfits can he wear? 90. I'm sure they don't all look great together, but we're not talking about fashion. We're just talking about possibilities. Next up, Tanya's zip code is 25768. How many zip codes altogether could be formed, each one using those same five digits. Well, you have to use these digits, it says. So that means once you use a two, you can't use a two again, so you can't replace, right? So that would be a good, um, and order is important, so permutation would be another way to do this. But being very basic about it, just realizing we have one, two, three, four, five, right? Uh, yeah, five different positions, and we can only use these numbers, and you cannot double use them. Well, the first number has five possibilities, right? Two, five, seven, six, eight could go there. And then the next number has four possibilities because one was used on the first. And then we have two numbers used, so you have three left. And then we have um, we have three numbers used, so we have two left, and down to one number. And when we multiply that, by the way, that would be the same thing as doing a permutation. But anyhow, that's going to be 120 um, different... Uh, zip codes using the same five digits. Okay, number 13, here is the tough one. Um, at least tough for me to explain, and maybe there's there's probably other ways to, to, to say it and break it down, but this is kind of how I saw it. Um, if all the six digit numbers formed by using the digits one, two, three, four, five, and six without repetition are listed from least to greatest, that's kind of the problem right there is least to greatest. Which number <clears throat> will be will be 550th in this list? Okay, this sounds um, a bit challenging. Now, luckily, this question is not on the test, um, but here's how, here's one way to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So one way to see this problem, um, this is number 13. I'm going to need some space for this. Um, just a little bit of background. Um, you know, if you're looking for total possible ways of arranging these uh, numbers, um, let's see. Let me go back to that again and just kind of double check. Um, if all six digits, digit numbers formed by using these digits went through, without repetition, yeah, no repetition of this. Okay, so, so the numbers are 1, 2, three, four, five, and six. No no a repetition. And order is important for numbers, right? So it'd be a permutation if you did it that way. Using the fundamental counting principle, you just look at one, two, three, four, five, six positions, right? And this is not the actual number, but this is, I'll do this in red, actually. These are, this is not the number. This is just how many numbers are possible for the first position and there's six numbers possible and then since that first position is taken then there's five numbers possible and four and three and two now you've used almost all the numbers there's only one possibility for that last position and so this is the fundamental counting principle using the multiplicative rule and multiplying that up we get 720 total but that's that's not what they're asking for they're asking us to find what the 500th um, the 500th number in our list, listing it from least to greatest. Yikes. So we want to be very systematic about this. <clears throat> and 
the first way I was thinking about this was, well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six positions. What if we actually just freeze that first number as one? Because we're trying to list it from smallest to biggest. And so the first numbers or the smallest numbers or the least numbers are going to start with one. And instead of me going through this whole thing and figuring out, you know, how many of those are, which we could do pretty quickly, right? We could, we could, these aren't the numbers, but we could say, well, wait, there's five left. There's four left, three, two, one left. And when you multiply all that, which is the same thing as going with a permutation of five choose five, right? You get 120. So there's 120 starting with one. Remember, we want to get to the 500th. So I just kind of kept on going. What if I froze the first one at two and then I figured out how many possibilities are there? And that's going to be the same thing, five choose five or five, five, four, three, two, one and multiply that and you get 120. And then if I freeze number three, whoops, number three, um, I'm going to get 120. And if I freeze number four, one, two, three, four, five. Once again, I get 120 combina or 120 permutations or arrangements. And so, so far, where am I at? When I add all that up, I'm at, four, let's see, 120, um, 240, 480. So I'm at the 480th, and I want to get to what, 500? I want to get to the, oops, went to erasing, darn it. I want to get to the 500th, going from least to greatest. I'm definitely going from least to greatest, starting from one to, okay, so I need, I'm going to need how many more? I need uh, 20 more. Uh, that's to get to 500th the 500th term. So this is how I went about that. Um, the next, going from smallest to largest, the next ones are going to be, the next one, the next set of numbers are going to start with five. So I know if I continue with this same process, I'm going to get another 120, which is going to put me at 600. That's way past, I only want 20 more. So then I thought, well, Starting with the least, well, five, what's the smallest numbers, arrangement of numbers that starts with five, right? Because I'm going from least to greatest. So five, so that the smallest ones must be starting with one. So I decided to freeze five and one. And then it gave me one, two, three, four. That would be, um, you know, this, this is, once again, this is not the numbers, this is the possibilities if I use a fundamental accounting principle. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, um, which is the same as a permutation of 4 choose 4, whoops, 4 choose 4, which is 24, which that puts me past 500 by only 4. So now I feel like I'm getting really close to the 500th. So if I freeze 5 and a 1 in my arrangement, I know there's tw only 24 more. So there's one more, two, three, four, five, six, dot, 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 right? And um, if I continue, um, like, you know, down here, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so those, at least it's only 24 arrangements, but that's still a lot of arrangements to try to systematically get to. So then uh, what I did was I thought, well, let me let me go to the, the biggest number. Let me go to the biggest number that freezes a five and a one. Right? What's that? What's the biggest? Ah, this darn thing. Okay, there we go. What's the biggest number that freezes a five? Let me try that again. The biggest number that freezes a five and a one. Because, right? A number that freezes 5 and 1 at the beginning, and then I do my arrangements from the re remaining numbers, is 24. There's 24 arrangements. So the biggest of those must have a 6 here, so I'm going to freeze 6. Now I'm down to only 3 arrangements that I have to do, which would be 
permutation of 3, choose 3, which is only 6. Ooh, that's a small enough number that I would like to deal with. So if I go back 6, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This, um, so I'm going to forget this, set 18. If I just go from 19 to 24, that is going to be 6 arrangements. So the largest of those 6 arrangements um, is going to be 5, that start with a 5, 1, 6. Has, the largest has to be the largest numbers left, whoops, the largest numbers left, which is a 4, 3, 2. That's the largest, but I don't really want to go backwards 6 places. That's not too bad. What if I go to 19 that has a 5 frozen, a 1, a 5 frozen, a 1 frozen, and a 6 frozen. Remember, when you have a 5, a 1, and a 6 frozen, there's only 6 ways arrangements with the last remaining 3. So that's why I'm focusing in on this. And oh, by the way, once I get to this guy right here, I know that I'm going to have the 500th term, okay? So now, um, at 19, so if I go back 6, at 19, this is going to be the smallest number that has a, one, a 5 frozen, a 1, and a 6. So the smallest number with those three remaining pieces has to start with a 2, right? The smallest number has to start with a 2, 3, 4, and the very next one has to be the number that I'm looking for, which is the 500th. So remember, 5, 1, 6 are frozen. And the next number, so instead of 2, 3, 4, the next number in order would be 2, 4, 3. And that is my 500th number. And, you know, that had a lot going on there. Um, just to make sure you don't think that that's, oh, that was killing more than I wanted to take out there. Um, wait a minute, let's see. So, wow, that is not very specific. Let me try that one more time. Do partial and get really small. Um, that's not supposed to be 43. It's supposed to be 4 and a 3, but I think you know that, but just in case, 4. Okay, so the digits 5, 1, 6, 2, 4, 3. That gives me my 500th. number and that's the answer to this question Whew, that was a lot let's go back and finish up with the rest remaining the remaining questions probably won't take as long as that one question um, let me see if i can shrink this down there we go um wait what was the answer again let me just write it down here doing all that work we end up getting the answer of five one six two four three I think a lot of people got everything else right on that section except for maybe that one problem. So now you can go back and do that one and get your 100% on 10.2. Let's finish this out. And finishing this out means that we just substitute 14 in for n. So that's 14 factorial up top. And we substitute in 6 for r. So 6, and I forgot go with my other n which is right there 14 and just copying the formula looks something like that so we've got 14 factorial over 14 minus 6 now 14 minus 6 gives me 8 factorial and so now um, we simplify by writing 14 times 13 12, 11, 10, 9, 8 factorial, which is going to reduce perfectly with 8 factorial in the denominator. And you multiply 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9, and you get a big number, 2,162,160. And last problem. Um, we're going to go ahead and substitute in for n is 21, so we got a 21 there. And 
uh, we have a level 21 right there, right? And then uh, subbing in for for uh, R, I guess we'll use another color. We have um, R is 14. That goes there, and it goes right there. And I better put the rest of the notation minus. So now, uh, when we do our subtraction, that's factorial also, we get 14 factorial, and then 21 minus 14 leaves me with 7 factorial. Now when I do, um, when I actually uh, do this problem, I like to line up the larger factorial first. So we've got 21 times 20 times 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14 factorial lines up perfectly with my 14 factorial. So that's the first thing I'd like to reduce. Uh, make sure I... Six, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Make sure I count it down correctly. Now, the other thing that I'm missing is... I am missing... Let's make that red since it's already red. I'm missing... That's not red. Darn it. I'm missing the 7 factorial. So that's just 7 times 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And then we just reduce common factors. And, you know, there's different ways of doing this, but I see um, 5 times 4 is, this, is equal to 20, so those reduce. And 7 goes into 7 once. Well, how about, let's do this. Let's do, how about 7 times 3 makes 21. So those reduce. And then what else? How about how about 6 goes into 6 once, 6 goes into 18 three times. And then we're down to just one last number. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 16 eight times. And then when we multiply all the remaining factors up in the numerator, um, we multiply one, 1 times 1 times 19 times 3 times 17 times 8 times 15. Uh, when we do that, we get 116,280. And I think I'm going to double check that real quick with the calculator. That would be 19 times 3 times 17 times 8 times 15, and that's 116,280. Perfect. And that is it, and I hope that answered maybe, I think the main question people had was number 13, and there's other ways of doing that, but using systematic lists and trying to be systematic without having to list too many things. Um, that's kind of how I saw it, by kind of thinking in that way. Okay, I hope everybody is uh, finishing up and uh, taking that, um, taking the MyMathLab test. Of course, you have two shots at it, so good luck, everybody, and I hope everybody is healthy and COVID-free. Take care.